All right. I'm uh, Carl Franklin. I'm going to be talking about uh, Poly, which is an open source project that you can use to do resilience strategies and uh, retry strategies for uh, connected systems that have transient errors. And so uh, that's what this talk is all about. There are two talks here at NDC on Poly. The other one's going to be Friday right here in this room at uh, 11.40 by Brian Hogan. And he's here as well. I'm sort of giving the, uh, the, the, f the starter pitch, the overview. And then Brian's going to dig into some more uh, interesting things on Friday. So um, first of all, I want to tell you about my company, AppV Next. We are the, the shepherds, the current shepherds of the Poly project, which I'm talking about here. Uh, AppV Next is a consultancy, which I started. How many people listen to .NET Rocks? Hey, you've heard that show. OK. That, that's a free podcast that's been on the air since 2002, uh, a long, long time. And I uh, basically reached out in a newsletter to listeners and said, anybody interested in, in their spare time working on some cool projects? And I got a whole bunch of people that uh, wrote me back and said yes. <clears throat> vetted a whole bunch of them. We started a Slack channel. And then out of those, about 10 stuck around and became social. and. And we were sort of uh, the, the guys that took over this project. Uh, anyway, so if you're interested in AppV Next, you can talk to me after. Um, Polly was accepted into the .NET Foundation in October 2016. The .NET Foundation is uh, a sort of a, well, it's a sort of a, a, a place of honor where uh, open source projects go and get visible support from Microsoft. Uh, that's really all it is, uh, and it was an honor to be in, uh, be considered in the .NET Foundation. All right, so we're talking about transient errors. These are things that happen un outside of your control, whether they're network outages or service outages, or you know uh, a, a service goes down for some reason. Maybe it's in the code, maybe it's in the infrastructure. We don't really know. Uh, denial of service attacks can happen. These, these are just things that happen. And how do you gracefully recover from these? That's what Polly helps with. <clears throat> and um, it's not necessarily all client-side stuff that we have to worry about. Because let's face it, if you're using a browser and the network goes down, you don't, you know, you don't expect the app to gracefully tell you the network is down. It's, you know, Gmail does this nicely. Oops, we can't you know, get the network right now. Maybe you want to retry. We're going to retry in a little bit, but if you want to retry now, you can do that. And that's nice. But, you know, if, you're, if your screen just blows up, that's life, right? I mean, this is what we're used to. But in a microservices world, when services are talking to services, nobody's there to, to go, oops, you know, so your code has to retry or, or come up with some sort of resilient strategy. And that's what Polly really helps you with. So what happens, this is a really good example of what happens when you're, you have a service that's struggling. One service is talking to another service, and that downstream service is struggling, and you're pelting it with retries. Well, this is kind of, this is kind of what happens. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, this is from a, sh a show called I Love Lucy in the 50s where Lucy and Ethel got a job wrapping strawberries or chocolates or something as they come down this conveyor belt. And then they, they go a little bit too fast, and they notice that uh, you know, they can't keep up with it. And so they don't really have any resilient strategy to deal with this problem. And so your downstream service is getting pinged with all these retries, and you become the denial of service attacker. That's basically what's happening here. So we're going to try to figure out how to deal with that. Uh, so Poly is, uh, here's all about it, uh, .NET 4.5 and higher, standard 1.1, which is, you know, pretty, pretty down there, pretty low, right? Standard 2, .NET Core 2.1, you use this fluent syntax to express these transient exception policies, and that's why Poly is called Poly. It's not because of the parrot, it's policies. And these policies are just objects. And we can do all sorts of strategies like retries and circuit breakers and timeouts and bulkhead isolation and, and fallback. And this is exactly what we're going to talk about. 
Uh, it's on NuGet, install dash package poly, pretty simple. So these are the resilient strategies. You've got retry, which is maybe it's just a blip, maybe it'll just work itself out. A circuit breaker helps that, you know, chocolate wrapping strategy right there. Uh, you know, that system is down, it's struggling, we're going to stop making calls to it on our side so it can recover. Uh, the timeout, simply don't wait forever. A bulkhead isolation is sort of a way that you can appropriate, appropriate resources so that one struggling s uh, service doesn't take down all the other services. And uh, caching, pretty, pretty uh, easy to understand there. And then fallback is just a, a way to, um, to fail gracefully with a, uh, an exception message that makes sense. And you can combine these and wrap them inside each other. No, it's actually not a cache that we provide. We snuggle up to whatever Redis or Elasticsearch or whatever you want to use. Yeah. So here's the history of Poly. In 2013, Michael Wolfenden started Poly. I actually got to meet him, which was great. Um, and in 2015, Scott Hanselman recommended it. We on .NET Rocks also recommended it in 2015. ThoughtWorks uh, recommended it. In December 2015, we took stewardship and added full asynchronous support. And then we started doing all these other things like the advanced circuit breaker and uh, other uh, features. And the really uh, recent landmark, which was great, last year we were brought into .NET Core uh, 2.1 with the HTTP client factory. They actually use our code base in the .NET Core framework, which is great. Now this isn't, these, are, these numbers are correct for adaptation, adoption rather, but um, the graph is a little bit out of date. So all poly packages to date, over 16 million downloads, 47 releases, 39 since we took over. So that's quite a, quite a trip. All right, so here's just simple syntax. Step one, you define the policy, and this policy is just an object. So once you have this policy and you define what exceptions you have and what the resilient strategy is, then you make a call, whatever, whatever code you want to run, you run within the context of the policy. Execute async right there. All right, so first let's talk about the retry patterns because there are a few of these. Retry just retries immediately upon failure. So specify the number of retries. And then a wait and retry puts a timeout in between each retry. Uh, and then that can be a, a constant number or you can increment it every time. So this is one of the ideas, uh, the exponential back off. Right, so first you wait two seconds, then you wait four seconds, then you wait 16 seconds, then you wait 32 seconds, etc. And it sort of uh, backs off a little bit more each time. Retry forever just keeps, it is what it is. It keeps retrying until it succeeds or you stop it. The circuit breaker um, is great because this, this essentially takes that struggling service and gives it a break, gives it time to recover. The circuit breaker says, um, like the ladies in the video, stop sending the chocolates, stop the conveyor belt, right? Stop hammering that downstream service with calls. We break it right at the calling side and fail to the caller, the calling code. Uh, and you fail fast to prevent cascading effects. Timeout, um, and these things, like I said, can be combined together. So a timeout could be like the outermost um, policy, right? Whereas, you know, we can try all these circuit breakers and things, but if after a half hour this, still, this thing still isn't coming back, wait till tomorrow. You know, it's no big deal. And bulkhead isolation is, uh, the source of this idea is large ocean vessels. The hulls are divided into bulkheads rather than having one big hollow hull you know, like the Titanic, let's say, you've got sections. So if a torpedo hits one section, only that section, that bulkhead, will fill up with water. It won't sink the whole ship. And the idea is akin to threading. So if, you, if you're making a call 
to system A and it's working and you're making another call to service B and that is struggling, well, your calling code resources, your CPU resources are being taken up by waiting for that struggling one all the time. And then the calls that are being made to the you know, service A that are working suffer because all the, the attention is paid to the one that's struggling. So that basically is a way to separate out all the calls. If you're making multiple calls to multiple services on one, on one client, that can uh, save you from taking down the whole ship. And then the cache, like I said before, um, it's a pluggable interface. You can add any cache provider that you want. Uh, and you know, you've asked for that before. That's a, a, that's a resilient strategy. So if you have a cache, you can plug it in. And fallback is simply the last gasp before giving up. Uh, it's a way to provide a substitute value or message or action when an operation fails after all is said and done. A policy wrap is a way to combine policies into a single object. So uh, starting with the outermost. So fallback is the outermost if you think of these as nested calls, right? then the retry, then the circuit breaker, then the timeout, uh, and then you can just execute that as one single policy. I'm going to show you the code for all of these things. So to recap, you, ha you define your transient exception handling with a policy. You use this fluent and concise syntax. These objects are thread safe. You can reuse them across call sites and reuse them. Um, you can call them synchronously or asynchronously. You can chain them together. And any code at all can be run within a policy. So this is uh, a GitHub repo for the demos, which include this slideshow and the samples that I'm going to show you right now. So this is the uh, local server. It's a local web API server that I'm running here. And the interesting thing about this uh, demo server is that we've created this throttling handler object. And the throttling handler, basically with this configuration, says we will accept three calls from the same IP address within five seconds. And on the fourth call, we're going to fail until that five seconds is up. We're going to fail with a 500. So this is just an easy way for us to <coughs> simulate um, an, a transient error, right? And, it, and it's constant. It's consistent so that all of the demos will react in, the, in different ways depending on their policies to the, same, to the same problem. And it's simply a values controller. You pass in a number, and it responds with response to request number ID and returns a message. Pretty, pretty easy. So then we have a console app client with a whole bunch of different demos. These are synchronous demos here, and these are the asynchronous versions of them. And I'm just going to go through them one at a time and show you what they look like. So first we start with making a call to this ser uh, service with no, uh, with no strategy at all, no resilience, no policy. And all of the demos look the same. In other words, what they do is the same. They make a call to, and I'll show you, this is in a try catch. They make a call with get string async to the web API and uh, increment the number, the total requests. And if there's a problem, we uh, say what the problem is. So if the message succeeds, we're showing in the color green the reply message. And if it fails, we're showing it with red color. And then we wait half a second, and we do it again until we stop. So this is what it looks like. Three requests go through, and then until your five seconds are up, every request fails with a 503. Pretty simple. And you press the space bar, and then it gives you some statistics at the bottom. So all these demos are going to kind of look like this with with different variations. 
All right, so the first one that uses a policy will just be a retry a number of times. Before we run the code, let's actually take a look at what, a, what, a co what the code does here. All right. Retry n times. All right, here we go. So, uh, and there's also very nice comments up here that this, and, and by the way, this isn't guidance. These demos aren't guidance. They, they're simply showing you the behavior of the policies. And then once we get toward the end of the demos, we'll start talking about how to put them together for a good strategy. All right, so here you go. We've got uh, cancellation token. Here's the policy definition. We're handling all exceptions right there. And you could specify which one specifically you want to handle. And retry async is the policy number. And we're using three retries. And then we have this lambda here that passes in the exception and the attempt. And you know, this is your new exception handler. Tell the user what they've won. So right here in the policy itself is the handling code, is the code to handle what happens when the exception occurs. Now we're still doing this in a try catch, all right? And you can see right here that everything that I is happening within the, ex uh, I'm sorry, everything that's happening within the policy is in yellow, and then all the exceptions are in red. So the code that makes the call get string async is exactly the same, right? And the exception is exactly the same. The only difference is we're doing await policy execute async, and then within the context of that execute async, that's where we're making the call. <coughs> All right, so you see, retry three times, boom, boom, boom. There's no timeout. It's just boom, boom, boom. Right? It's, it, it makes three calls right in a row, and then we get the exception in red. Okay. So not, not a great policy, but that's what's happening. Now the next one, we'll add a timeout in between. So here's the policy right here. It's a wait and retry. And the retry count is also three. And now your uh, sleep duration is 200 milliseconds. We're going to wait 200 milliseconds between each retry. And here's our on retry. And we're going to log that in yellow. Everything else is exactly the same. So now, in between each yellow uh, call, retries, you're going to see it goes a little bit slower, 200 milliseconds. It's still not enough time, but that's what's happening. OK. Now we're going to add enough retries so that it actually works. And again, not guidance. This, is, this isn't how you debug a problem. Uh, but now we're going to do 20 retries. And that's the only number, that's the only thing that has changed in this demo. Still 200 milliseconds between each try. Okay, so now we don't ever get that exception. We're just doing 20 retries and that seems to be enough for this particular problem. All right. Now, this one is wait and retry forever. Now, retry forever is going to look exactly the same because the only thing is we're not saying retry 20 times. We're saying keep retrying with a 200 millisecond delay each time until it works. And there is actually a case on the client side for uh, using wait and retry forever, and that is well, I was doing the, I was using, uh, I was writing a, a, an app once that was a WPF app that collected some data from a connect and then sent that data up to the cloud and they did their secret sauce calculations 
and then brought the data back with their evaluation on the next screen. And you couldn't advance to the next screen until you had that data. So it was either this app stops right here or uh, we get that data. We can't continue on. We can't move forward with the application until this happens. So, you know, in that case, a wait and retry forever is fine because the user can't just say, ah, no, that's all right. We'll skip, go ahead to the next page or whatever. So it's either it's not going to work, we're going to close it and come back after lunch, or we're going to wait forever until it works. That's up to you to decide. Okay, now this is the cool one. Wait and retry with an exponential back off. So all we're doing here is we have a wait and retry async and we're going to do it six times except in the um, the num the the I'm sorry the the timeout value is calculated from the attempt and using uh, exponential an exponent of two with the attempt we're going to increase the timeout every single time that it fails otherwise the code is exactly the same This is a great strategy. Cool? Okay. Now we're going to start combining some of these. Um, this is a wait and retry with a circuit breaker. And uh, again, the circuit breaker, well, this, the circuit breaker basically fails to the calling code on the client side and says, hey, that downstream service is struggling. We're j I'm just going to fail quickly to you so that we don't keep over, f you know, flooding it with calls. What's interesting about this demo is there's two policies. The wait and retry policy is a 200 millisecond wait and retry forever. And then inside that, we're going to have the circuit breaker policy, which basically is going to uh, fail. On, uh, we're going to break the circuit if the action fails four times in a row. So we allow four exceptions. Then we break the circuit. And then all the calls that are going out don't go out. And we're going to then wait for three seconds. And then we have some uh, handlers here. The circuit breaker metaphor is a little bit different, uh, a metaphor to wrap your mind around if you're used to thinking about database connections. Database connections, when they're open, everything's working. And you can talk to the database, right? And when you close the connection, you can no longer talk to the database. Well, elect an electrical circuit when it's closed, that's when signal is going through it. When it's open, that means the circuit is broken, and then it's not working. So it's opposite of a database connection metaphor. That may be confusing. I don't know. So what's in the other interesting thing about this is that these calls are nested. So first, we're using the wait and retry policy, and then executing code, which calls through the circuit breaker policy execute. So there, it's nested. And um, that's why we created the policy wrap, which we're going to show in the next demo. So you don't have to nest code inside code inside code. But that's what we're doing right here. Wait and retry on the outside, circuit breaker on the inside. Let's see what happens. OK. So that purple, let me just go back here. So, so this is happening in the retry. You know, we retry three times. Um, we allow four times. So this is actually happening, happening out of sequence. But so then the, the circuit breaker kicks in, and it breaks the circuit for three seconds. OK? And then all of these exceptions were failing to the calling code until those three seconds go uh, 
you know, are up. And then the, circ the next one is half open. So we make a call as a trial, and if that works, okay, we close the circuit again. All this happens within the policy. So th that's the beautiful thing about this, is once you set up that policy object, you no longer have to worry about all of these things. You just make the call within the policy code. All right, the next, next one is the same demo, but we're using a policy wrap. So we have our two policies, wait and retry and circuit breaker. And now we create a policy wrap that wraps the retry on the outside, the circuit breaker on the inside. And now instead of nesting, we're simply within the policy wrap executing the call. So it's going to look exactly the same. Uh, we'll get exactly the same results, except that it's a lot neater code-wise. Okay. Now we're going to add a fallback in here. This is a wait and retry circuit breaker with a fallback. So now we're actually using four policies. Check this out. Here's our wait and retry policy, same as last time. Then we have a circuit breaker, also same as last time. We allow four ex exceptions, then we break for three seconds. Um, also, I didn't really point this out all that much before, but we have an on break, an on reset, and an on half open. These are all uh, different handlers for the states of the circuit breaker, which is cool. All right, now we have a fallback for the circuit breaker, which basically fails with, you know, please try again later, and we substituted with a fallback policy there. And now we have a fallback policy for any exception, right? And this is the difference right there. Broken circuit exception and just exception. Now here's how we wrap them. We take the resilient strategy and wrap that, wait and retry and circuit breaker, just like last time. But now we use another policy wrap to take that resilience strategy and wrap those in fallbacks. So fallback for any exception, wrap, fallback for circuit breaker, wrap, resilient strategy. And now, just like before, we just have that one policy wrap we execute it, and all of those policies get uh, come into play. There you go. So let's take a look at this a little bit. So there's our wait and retry three times. Circuit breaker happens. And now instead of getting just a regular old exception, we're handling it in the policy. Fallback catches the failed with circuits now open, not allowing calls. And then we have your please try again later. Right? So essentially we're we're getting a chance to that to, to specify that last gasp instead of just letting it fall to a regular exception. And that's the funny thing about poly, is it really is a giant wrapper around uh, try catch. If you look at the source code, that's really what it is. It comes down to uh, just an intelligent uh, exception handling mechanism. So now we're going to do another wrap. And this uh, has a fallback, a timeout, and wait and retry. So the timeout, basically, we're going to test the timeout as being the overall um, policy. And we're going to test it by making the timeout really short, two seconds. And the wait and retry policy is four seconds. So the timeout should kick in before that wait and retry policy does. That's the whole idea here. And now we have our fallbacks for any exception and fallback for timeout. Boom, right there. So the fallback for the, the timeout happened because 
we specifically set it to be shorter than the, uh, than the weight. And so this demonstrates that, you know, after, after all is said and done, uh, you know, we can do all these retries and we can do the circuit breaker and all of that. But at a certain time, we're going to say, we're going to give up. We're going to say, okay, we've spent too much time on this. Now we're just going to fail. We'll, tr we'll put this in the dead letter queue, come back tomorrow, something like that, whatever you want to do with it. Okay, now we're going to do bulkhead demos. And as I said before, the bulkhead um, isolates calls into uh, different bulkheads. You sort of think of them as threads, but they're not really. They're just contexts within which um, calls are made. And when you isolate them, then when you're making calls to different services, if one is struggling, it doesn't affect the other one. The code is a little bit uh, strange in that we go into this loop and we have our total requests and we're either picking uh, good or faulting calls and we have two endpoints on the API. And so if this is a, a good call, we're calling this throttled or non-throttled good and this is, the, this is the control group right here. We're not actually isolating them to show you how, what the problem is. And then, if it's a faulting call, we're calling this uh, endpoint non-throttled faulting. And so this one is going to fail. The other one is going to, should uh, be good. It, it's returning good calls. But as you see, we're, we're just going in a loop and we're making calls to each one. And we'll see what happens with that faulting call. And this is going by really fast, so I'm just going to let it run for a few seconds and then I'll stop it and we'll see see what happens okay so to the good endpoint we made 25 requests only one succeeded 24 failed that's to the good endpoint the one that should be returning okay we requested to the faulting endpoint 33 uh, 0 succeeded 10 are pending 23 failed so what's going on here is that the calls to the struggling service are affecting the calls to the one that isn't struggling. So now, we take that same code and we wrap the calls in bulkheads, bulkhead policies, right? We have bulkhead policy for good calls and a bulkhead policy for faulting calls. And now rather than uh, calling them without a policy, we call the, them through these bulkheads. <laughs> execute async, and faulting calls execute async. Otherwise, the code's exactly the same. Let this go for a bit. Okay. 28 good calls requested, 28 succeeded. 31 bad uh, faulting calls requested, zero succeeded, some pending, some failed. There you go. All right, so some further features that we have in here. You can handle multiple exception types in one policy. And uh, so here's an example of handling SQL exceptions and where the number of the exception is particular to the call that you're making, 1205. Or, or a timeout exception. So you can use the or um, method. Uh, also, delegates, you can use those as well. So very, very flexible in terms of what you can handle specifically. If you want to handle every exception or just an HTTP request exception, um, this handles a return value as well. So you may be in a situation like uh, making a SOAP call where you're going to get a 200 every time 
um, except that somewhere in the process of that service, there was an exception or there was an error. So it returned an error, but, but the HTTP uh, return type, return value was 200. Um, you can handle inner exceptions with the on inner call or method or whatever you want to call it. So uh, now we can handle HTTP request exception or the inner exception operation canceled. Uh, the policy registry is, um, in some ap apps, it can be useful to be able to dynamically reconfigure the policy without restarting the process. So you might want to tweak circuit breaking thresholds or something like that to be more or less sensitive according to um, what the conditions are in production. So with policy registry, you just replace the policy in the registry with a new one. And when the underlying configuration source is detected to have changed, it just loads up. And um, you can read more in the wiki, which I'll give you uh, a link to here in a minute for that. Uh, integration with core 2.1 which or higher, which is great. HDB client factory, you can configure um, these uh, we use a factory to get particular policies like those that might be, um, I don't know, if you have uh, one that's pre-configured for the GitHub, you know, uh, for the GitHub API, for example. You can just use these to spit out policies, and it's, it's actually a very nice, uh, very nice way to use it. So some stuff that's coming up. We've got um, Chaos Monkey kind of stuff going on here. There's a, um, if you look on the Poly website, there's another GitHub project called uh, Simi, I think it is, kind of like Simeon. Uh, and we, we can do, we can inject fake results into uh, our, our calls. And so this is great because now you can test how things fail without actually, you know, making things fail. Also, we can uh, inject exceptions, turn them on and off by percentage or by, uh, you know, specific number of times. Pretty cool <laughs> stuff. I haven't used this yet, but also latency. We can inject latency. So instead of saying, make this stuff fail, we can say, uh, you know, this is going to time out. Maybe we can handle that a certain way cool stuff. Uh, this is all about that stuff as well. So things that we're working on, the, the most important thing I think that's next for us is this distributed circuit breaker. Um, Azure Functions just came out with this durable function, uh, an entity function, which is essentially a stateful actor. And that can we think, really make it easy for you to do a distributed circuit breaker. The problem with circuit breaker is only one instance of an app knows what the state of that circuit is, right? But if you distribute that, now multiple actors can understand what the state uh, of the circuit breaker is to back off calls to a downstream service. So this is something that we're working on. It's uh, the guys at Microsoft and the functions team are really interested in it. And uh, stay tuned for that. So there are some other, um, imp I won't say implementations of Poly, but similar projects going on here. One is PolyJS. This isn't us, but um, it, it simply does a, a retry and retry and wait. I think that is the state of it now. At least it was as of December. They may have um, done some more things. but. Um, also, Hystrix is uh, a Netflix resilience framework, but it's no longer in development. And Netflix decided to end development in early 2018. But the original engineers moved on, and we hope that uh, it's going to be taken up by other contributors. So that's a, a Java or Scala, you know, JVM framework. And here's just a couple of snippets of the code you might see in PolyJS. Looks really, 
really easy, really to, easy to understand. And Hystrix, also very similar. So here's the, the wiki. This is a good uh, thing to take a picture of if you don't uh, want to just Google poly wiki. Um, great uh, documentation there, ideas, resilient strategies, recommendations and patterns, uh, what's going on, what's new, what's coming up. We have a Slack channel, we have a blog, uh, easy, easy stuff. So let me tell you about the people that are involved here. Um, I, my job is just to simply do what I'm doing right now, which is go talk to developers about Poly, tell them what's uh, possible and get them to start using it. Um, I haven't done the work on Poly. I, I started the client demo with Joel Hewlin, but Dylan Reisenberger has essentially done the lion's share of the work, uh, he and Joel, but I would say Dylan is the guy right now who is the go-to lead developer. Um, Joel Hewlin also, uh, he, he works on it as well. So, and of course we have lots and lots of contributors in the OSS project, and maybe you'd be one of them, we hope. So I'm going to let you out a little bit early. And uh, if anybody has any questions right now, that would be fine. Otherwise, um, I'll just be off to the side if you want to talk to me there. Thanks.